This is a Power 98.7 podcast. Now we're talking. Subscribe to Power 98.7 podcasts in iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. There's more on power987.co.za. Stay connected with the latest news across your world. Power 98.7. Now we're talking. All right, welcome back to the show. It is uh, 10 minutes to 8 o'clock here on Power Business with myself, Nosipokhatebe, standing in for Nolutandom Tontim Lambo. Now, we move to this. As of August the 1st, the European Union's Artificial Intelligence Act officially came into effect, making a historic milestone in AI governance. Now, this comprehensive piece of legislation is designed to ensure that artificial intelligence is deployed safely and ethically, and its impact extends beyond EU borders, affecting businesses worldwide, including those based here at home in South Africa. Now, AI expert Johan Stein joins us on the line to unpack the possible consequences of this new legislation on South African uh, companies. Johanna, very good evening and welcome to the show. Oh, it's great to be with you. Thank you so much. A very interesting topic and a very important one. Talk to us then about uh, the overview of the EU's Artificial Intelligence Act and its significance for both EU-based and non-EU-based businesses. Look, it's about time that we have some groundbreaking regulation on this world-changing technology. A lot of countries from from Northern America, across Europe, um, China, um, across Africa as well, are working on regulating this technology. But the EU is really at the forefront, and it's so encouraging that it's finally been enacted. And it's that fine balance between innovation and regulation. Do we over-regulate it, but we no longer compete globally? Mm Mm-hmm. Or do we not uh, regulate it enough and we cause damage given the power of this technology to make automated credit decisions, health decisions, the impact on our children and their education uh, going forward? So I'm very encouraged by it. There are some nuances in, in this legislation that I, I'd like to talk about. Hopefully we'll um, take what works for us here in Africa from that regulatory framework and apply it to our own situation, Mm. our own um, continent, our languages, our diversity. It is a good thing, but uh, it's about time that we start regulating this technology. Yeah, definitely. And uh, that balancing act that needs to be uh, happening there. Uh, but Johan, then, um, as you mentioned, you know, those nuances. Talk, ab- talk to us about the key provisions then of the act that businesses need to be aware of. Yeah, look, I think w- there's several pillars. The one that I really like is what we call explainable AI. Mm-hmm. Most of our banks, even here in South Africa and, and uh, insurance companies, telcos and others, are already using automated decisioning systems. These uh, technology platforms are quite quick, like very accurate, and they're, they're better than most teams of humans in making credit decisions, for instance, based on all the data they have on us from, from you know, the credit unions and our, our credit information. But what, what the, the one thing that I really like about the EU's AI Act is that me as a consumer have the right to ask my bank, for instance, Mm -hmm. if I apply for a home loan, why was the home loan declined? Or why did I not receive the credit uh, limit or the interest rate that I should have received? And and then that explainability, how did the algorithms get to that decision, Mm -hmm. should be explained by the bank. Now, what I say is, if we think our banks have large contact centers at the moment, imagine every one of your consumers have the right to call you and say, how did the AI make this decision? I think we're going to probably triple our call, call center agent um, <laughs> base going forward. And it's a good thing because we can't just let these algorithms make the decisions. Remember, there are biases inherently built into these platforms, given your ethnicity, yeah. your gender, the ge- ge- geography where you live. And um, and the problem is, you know, we employ, employ a lot of the so-called global north platforms yeah. here in Africa. These platforms are amazing. I think let's not reinvent the wheel. Let's use what we can use. The trick is here to apply 
applying it to our unique socioeconomic situation. Just because I'm a male or a male of a certain or a female of a certain ethnicity yeah. living in a certain town, if that impacts the decision that the AI makes, I have the right as a consumer to ask my bank or my insurance company, review that, get a human to review that, not just an AI. That's one of, for me personally, one of the landmark things, that explainable AI. You know, it's not just this black box. The AI makes a decision and we have to go with it. Yeah. I have the right to stand up and say, no way, redo it. Now, the workforce that it will take to actually deal with all those um, concerns from consumers will be astounding. We'll, as I said, we'll probably have to treble our call center agents and hopefully they'll be enforced and informed to deal with these uh, issues. Yeah, but that is an interesting uh, consideration that, you know, uh, it's not uh, just AI uh, and then us coming along for the ride of AI, but, you know, that it needs to be that balance again um, of uh, that human interaction um, as well as uh, that AI helping us um, uh, rather than uh, it leading us. But then, yeah. Johan, how does then the staggered time frame uh, of the enforceability impact businesses, particularly those outside the EU, such as mm. uh, South African firms? Yeah. Look, if, if you're a South African firm dealing with client, client, European Union, you have to very quickly make sure you are aware of what this um, legislation implies. If you use any kind of automated technology, any kind of predictive technology, AI technology, you will have to comply. Again, that explainability. And, and the EU Act uh, divides it into a number of categories depending on the severability or the, the potential to cause harm. Obviously, when it comes to the weaponization, when it comes to making healthcare decisions. So it's when it's high impact, very dangerous potential decisions, it, it's highly regulated. When it's lower level, kind of more back office admin, repetitive task decisions, it's it's a bit more lenient. But I think it's important for South African firms dealing with the EU yeah. to, to be very aware of this. It's like when GDPR, you know, um, the privacy reg regulation and then obviously our own PR regulation very much aligned to GDPR came into effect. We had to very quickly as South African banks and other organizations make sure we understand it and comply. The same is happening now. The, but the other thing is, this regulation is a framework that most countries in the world will follow one way or another. And in Africa and in South Africa, we will most likely adopt, I would think, 60 to 80 percent of that regulatory flame, framework. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't have a regulatory framework for AI technologies in South Africa. There's a lot happening, fortunately, to, to get there. My encouragement to my clients that I deal with is make sure you understand the EU's AI Act. And even if you don't deal with EU clients, because most of what that Act says is going to pl apply to you dealing with South African customers. Um, and, and remember, the, the reason for regulation is protection. Yeah. You're protecting people to make sure that harm is not being caused. Right now, we, we have a, like a cowboy world when it comes to AI technologies. We can pretty much do, as long as it applies to Poppia and then some maybe some other current frameworks we have. Yeah. But there's so much we can do that can cause harm that uh, we, we can model and data on our clients and, and, and sell things to them that they probably never would have uh, uh, kind of agreed to because it's not being regulated. So... Um, my advice to South African firms and executives is get your heads around this EU AI Act because most of what it says, even if you don't deal with EU customers, is going to apply in this country hopefully sooner than later. Mm. Uh, Johan, quickly then, just before we run out of time, you know, the Act requires then employees working with AI systems to have appropriate AI literacy. What kind mm. of training then should businesses provide to ensure com compliance with this requirement? Yeah. It is such a great question because, you know, we do a lot of L&D, you know, uh, learning and development training, HR departments, a lot of compliance training. Most organizations from an executive level down to even the lowest levels have very little idea of what this AI stuff is. We think it's chat GPT and we just prompt stuff or, you know, we think it's Hollywood movies and robots roving around. 
it, it is imperative that we start training everyone in our organizations, not to become AI experts or data scientists, yeah. but to understand the, the business impact, but also the ethical impact, because this technology gives us power over consumers that we've never had before. And, and you know, I, I always say that the, the role of philosophy and ethics you know that boring stuff when you do a Bachelor of Arts that you'll probably never get employed for? That stuff is becoming more and more important to train people. So I think there's a huge need to train everyone in our organizations about the basics of this technology, how to deal with it responsibly, whether there's a regulatory framework or not. Um, and unfortunately, in, in my experience of the clients I deal with, Almost nothing is happening. So there's a huge wake-up call needed. And let me just end this section to say the problem with regulation, it, it normally, regulation is pushed when there's a big problem. You know, we started yeah. wearing seat belts when we started having car crashes in the early days. The question is, what has to go wrong that will cause massive harm to people yeah. before we start regulating? And would it be too late? We, we don't have to wait for that, I think. We, we should start doing it right now and start with educating people. Yeah, Johan, thank you so much for your time. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you. All right, that was Johan Stein, an AI expert, taking us through the EU's Artificial Intelligence Act and the consequences for South African companies. You've been listening to a Power 98.7 podcast. For more podcasts, visit power987.co.za or subscribe wherever you get your podcasts.